Yeah, I'm now live. Checking connection. It works. And... What the hell is that? I was promised I'm at the beach. I kind of wish I brought something to park this. Oh, ah, oh. Ah, ah. Yeah, I saw that. I'm not going to pretend what happened there, but let's just pretend the sand just got <laughs> wet and it wasn't from the water in the lake behind me. Hi, bad. Well, whatever, right? Bad is a relative word. Oh, bugs everywhere. Hey. Okay. I'm just going to catch to the chase Holy here. Fuck, these people are stopping. <laughs> I didn't expect these to, to sell like these. All right. Okay. So, anyway, hi everyone. Yep. Right, we've got okay. another episode of yeah. Dwell On. Like I said, it is uh, live on location at the beach this time. That's and good. it looks like the reception is decent enough that we're going to be able to <laughs> make a, uh, make a good show out of it. She's on the floaty there. So we are going to last as long as the internet connection is decent and or half an hour or. <laughs> But at least the waves are going to come back. All right. For anyone who's tuning in now or later, hello, welcome. Yeah. And grab some questions here already from all the ones that have recorded in the past. I will when I'm done this one. First question. <laughs> Who would you prefer as a partner? A good looking person or an extremely clever person? Why not both? Why can't it be both? Good looking is kind of a relative and subjective word, isn't it? And an extremely clever person, however, is something that catches my eye because I like to think of myself as an intelligent person and I get really intrigued when somebody's using their brain. Good looking, like I said, is super relative and really... Um, I, I, when I popped it up after... Shallow? But what I will say is I do like to consider that I am healthy and I, you know, I'm mindful about what I eat, I like to work out, I like to play sports. So I'd like to see a partner who can go hand in hand with something along those lines, but I wouldn't go over the top and say that I need, you know, a model to be my significant other. Well, just like, a, you know, have, have a partner that can kind of match that type of, that, that type of bit. So it's not really a priority, it's just usually kind of goes hand in hand with my own personal lifestyle. Clever though, like I said, I absolutely love um, intelligence. I love the the get my brain moving and whatnot. So that would that would certainly stand out with me. Absolutely, no question. So that was quick and easy. I'm gonna take that and put it to the side. Geez, at this rate, I'm gonna answer like 30 questions all at once this week. Try another one. Tell me about your child and how you grew up. Oh, okay, so much for that. That's such an awesome question. Tell me about your childhood and how you grew up. Tell me about your childhood and how you grew up. Okay, everyone, buckle in. So, I grew up in. I feel like the. At work, it's like. Sun? Okay. Tell me about your childhood and how you grew up. Now what, Mom? So. What can I do now? The, so I was born in 1981, right? And I grew up in a. I told her, I was, I was like, in a world best friend, that like, was you know, nowhere course. near full she of as much mark, information because, like, as there is today. She's probably wondering why I didn't just say Angie. Or radio. <laughs> right? Because <So, laughs> I always refer to her as my best friend. I growing like, up I and knowing, I've like mentioned that before, knowing that something was off. You know? um, and I not having like, the information to like, radio. Break yours. Thank you. She showed up for me over and over again. when Knowing that... Something was off, but not me. having the information you know, necessary like, to be able to articulate I know how it what popped, it does to me. Remember, like, when the um, was, was something that stuck with me anxiety. on a regular basis. Thing. I was like, I feel like, can't, you know what? I was so it was something that was difficult to experience too, because I didn't know how to share that I was feeling well, dysphoria. I was feeling gender dysphoria. So I was living a life where I continued to be pigeonholed is, you know, in a boy's life, 
feeling like I was out of place, but not being able to. Do you want to you hungry, girl? But, yeah. but not being yeah, able to share you want me to make you that little, I was feeling a little bowl of snacks? Yeah. not comfortable with the it's decisions so that were being made. Yeah. I guess it's a really but simple and plain way to put it. Also Let's add to the fact that I grew up going to yeah. a, uh, you know, a, private pa a private Catholic school and <laughs> hearing religion coach to me and having so much skepticism in my no, own head about these, you. you know, the rules yeah, and the policies and whatnot and that like you're that. talking about and, 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 and yeah, enforcing yeah, and encouraging doesn't oh. coincide with how I feel. And again, I was, I, I didn't know how to share that, but yeah, I gotta like it was it was it was a difficult and contradicting point in my life because how do you challenge the authority without knowing how to challenge the authority that you're dealing with? So anyway, the, um, that was the bulk majority of my childhood. I spent most of my time well outside playing sports and everything like that um, after school. And, you know, as I grew up a little older, I was playing video games and whatever, but I would continue to just keep it in the back of my head. Of, I'm still just kind of out of place. I still just feel like, 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 I was, I was just stuck. I was stuck. And I don't know how else to really explain that. To grow up, right? You know, I, th I think a lot of people could say that I had a quote unquote mm, so normal childhood, like, so but bad. first, so what is that there. relatively? But and then, the second, I was playing the part, I was filling the role, Don't worry, I'll get you home but I sure as hell wasn't happy. <laughs> One of my challenges of uh, my childhood was wishing that someone knew how to how to get me to open up. Or to
you allow me a place that I felt safe enough to open up. Oh. And yeah, I didn't oh, yeah. ever feel like but, that. Oh, well. Right? There's going like, to be many just... times. I feel Robert, like I just I can't. To get anything, so when I'm on my way I, there, I, I, I don't way. have the oh, I'm not on my safe way space now. that I need to uh -huh. allow myself to open myself up without being well, then. criticized well, or told that I'm wrong me. or not supported yeah, or I'm whatever it be. I never oh, felt yeah. that vibe ever, and because of not feeling that vibe, it was a very really suppressed that. life. What ended up happening too, to compound things even further, was I got pushed out of kindergarten into grade one probably through kindergarten and on paper that sounds like a great thing the challenge of that though by taking somebody out of their age group and putting them into a new age group and now automatically being the run is in the words itself being the run and from that i was subject to more bullying just by the nature of being the youngest kid in the class doesn't matter what school you're in right that when you're the youngest kid in the class you're gonna get bullied and so with that it really exaggerated my own inter like my own internal defense mechanisms because again I was struggling with my own feeling about myself and then trying to make sure that I felt safe around other people yeah, like that I'm now obligated to be with in a social group that is outside of what my social development should have been. To take it a step further, and it's a memory that sticks with me incredibly strongly. I remember there was one time I was, you know, in the morning, you know, my mom's taking me to kindergarten or whatever it would be. And I'm about to take my jacket off and hang it on the hook or whatever in kindergarten class. And my teacher says... Shanti. My teacher says, Oh, you don't belong here anymore. <laughs> Let those words sit with you. When your teacher, your kindergarten teacher says, You don't belong here anymore. What type of language is that? And that is, that is sat with me. And what sits with me even more so was that. Like this wasn't like a sporadic decision. It can't. It can't have been a sporadic decision. So to just not have that mindful thoughtfulness of the language to be used, or even asked if I want to go to a new grade, if I want to go further forward and lose the friends that I had, or you know, like again, I don't remember what my my, my friendly relationships were like in kindergarten, but. Uh, did they go? Where? To, 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 to just ask if that's something that I'm, you know, enthusiastic about or whatever. So add that to the pile. So it was, um, it was a difficult life. I felt incredibly isolated. And I felt incredibly isolated in a system that was not conducive with, with you know, with, with, with trans people just in general taken out of a yeah, you know like, a social development and put into a completely different situation simply because i was excelling when it comes to things like arithmetic and, and writing or like yeah reading or whatever right like to go ahead and use those parameters and be like we're just going to advance this child through um fair warning unless your child is like an utter prodigy keep your kid in the same age group as their peers because the social development is clearly critical for just learning and developing a healthy life as well simple enough uh, i played sports for a tiny bit and even then i feel like i was like I understand, of course, sports are expensive, right? And you get older, you understand it more. So now it's more well understood. Of, you know why I got taken out of sports because at least the example was um, that it got it was expensive for myself and my brother. But even with that, like I was having so much fun playing hockey. I was having so much fun playing soccer, and then all of a sudden, I'm not playing hockey and soccer anymore. I'm good. I need what I and that was it, period. And so I spent the bulk majority of my time after school outside playing basketball or tennis or 
<laughs> running around with other kids in the same neighborhood, right, or like the same area that we were living in, and I was just doing the best that I could to stay as active as I, as I could without being part of organized sports. And that was something that I also still felt. I was like, I love sports. Why am I not allowing that? So it was, um, that's that's what I felt a lot with my childhood. And then uh, <coughs> funny, so even though I was mentioning, you know, driving out to the beach, I was saying yeah. earlier today how uh, this is an area that I used to camp around. Um, probably about an hour away from here, but still to the point. And, that was a lot of my life too, where right after school, we would get in the car, drive out here, and even then, kind of be left to our own devices for most of the weekend and for all intents and purposes, right? That we would, and by we, I mean myself, my brother, uh, you know, friends of mine that would be in the same campground and whatnot, because um, we had like a permanent spot. I don't remember how long we were there, but we were definitely here for a while, but um, like full 53 foot trailer and da 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 like it was pretty much home away from home and away from the apartment but um, but otherwise no we'd be out here and I'd be always out on my bike going through trails or stomping around in the woods or just meeting up with friends we'd be out swimming um, absolutely you could find me in the store right on like shitty rainy days playing arcades and whatever absolutely rocking Dr. Mario like nobody's Ugh. business and um, and otherwise just or, or fishing or playing in a river right on a paddle boat or whatever it be that was most of my life it was always active it was always doing something but the worst part out of that was always feeling like there was there were more distractions than enjoyments i was i was hardly having fun i was having more time just trying to get through the days and let the days zoom by hoping that everything that i was feeling would just kind of disappear um that was kind of it right like it was not much of an exciting childhood. It was, you know, there were definitely things to do, but nothing really defined who I was as a person because everything was just kind of in the moment hoping that it would take away the feelings that I had of just wishing that I could allow myself to be a little more authentic while I do those things. I think that covers that well. Yeah, pretty much. It's like my youngest childhood. I don't want to, like, teens, I think, is a different age group, so that's, that's called that childhood. It's coffee, I guess, you said. <laughs> if I died tonight, is there anything you regret not telling someone? I love you. Bombay Sapphire chip. That's it. That and ice. And what? This Bombay Sapphire. If I died tonight, is there anything you regret not telling someone? I love you. I like Jim Caesar's over vodka. Oh. Yeah. Powerful. I'll make you half, she says. What's your relationship to on drugs? I don't do drugs. Um. And I think when it comes to <laughs> any sort of drugs, as long as people stay safe and they don't bring an unsafe environment to others not involved with usage, do what you call uh, I believe strongly that there oh, should be you're jumping, you're bum, advances bum in our face, society you know? to create yeah, you know, safe sites when it comes to usage or injection and whatever. Um, that is a huge miss uh, that needs to be you know, really rectified at a high rate of speed. But my biggest concern, not necessarily is about the drugs, but it is um, the... Um, what did she do? some of the harm that can come along with it uh, just, and, and honestly it's not necessarily about the drugs itself but it's just by the uh, networking merchandise and so on that's the part that's unfortunate and uh and i stay completely out of it and i prefer to stay out of my life too because of that but if uh, like i said if, if, if people use and do drugs right, have at her just don't bring me into your mess and you know, 
don't keep others who don't want to be part of that out of your mix. And uh, that said, though, like I said, uh, there is uh, there's a huge mix by, by not helping create a safer space for people who uh, use drugs to um, to be able to 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 use them and not feel like there's a uh, risk that comes along with it. So, aside from what the drugs do, right? But otherwise it comes up. Utilizing and whatnot. I'm zooming through these ones. Is there anything that makes you anxious? Yeah, lots of stuff that's made me Is there anything that makes me anxious? Um, oh my god, this is too much. Is there anything that makes me anxious? I'm trying to think of like specific things. Um, I hate phone calls. Like, if I can think of something right off the top of my head, I hate making a phone call. I just hate phone calls. I hate phone calls. I hate dialing <laughs> numbers and calling out like and out I just I have to rehearse the call. <laughs> I have to plan time for the call. I have to assume that it's gonna be longer than it is. I do not like phone calls. And I just and I always feel as if I'm making the phone call because I'm going to get rejected. Whatever it is. Even if it's me calling my pharmacy to get a filled prescription I just have this idea in my head that I'm just going to get rejected and <laughs> why did I make the phone call, right? I don't know. I, like, when I think of, like, what makes me anxious, phone calls definitely stands out there, which is funny, right? Like, because considering everything else, is, like, are phone calls really the biggest problem? I don't think so. But, um, but otherwise, no, you know what? I, I do the best that I can to just be mindful about whatever I'm doing, right? Like, I'm not, like, I'm not, I don't know if I don't let people scare me, I don't let people put me in fear, I don't let people, or situations, or whatever, make me reconsider, whatever. If anything, when it comes to any sort of anxiety, otherwise, it's just a matter of wanting an experience to be what, what I'm optimistic for instead of, you know, um, instead of what, you know, possible outcomes are and whatnot, but otherwise, you know, I just, you know, what, 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 what makes me anxious the most, though, like I said, like if I can think of like some tangible thing right now, literally phone calls. Having to make phone calls, I despise, and I don't do anything but make a phone call, if the option ever exists. Oh my god! So that's that. I am if I could change anything about the way you were raised, or if you could change anything about the way you were raised, what would it be? We're best friends like friends. Still be. thinking about it. Question. Bit ago. Um, if, and I actually I brought this up in a uh, an unrelated, yet kind of related YouTube video that I posted. Yes, was it yes? For anyone who follows my personal YouTube channel, check it out. Right, I did a uh, two and a half hour long video where a uh, uh, friend of mine and her daughter went out for dinner, and uh, turns out she had a lot of you know questions that she was having shot to ask and whatnot. And uh, it was a nice break for our imagination. Some, some of the video or part of uh, recorded video, some of the questions that he had, and then also just some of, some of those other. Like, questionable questions, I think is what it was called. So I, um, in there, I remember I brought up about my childhood in that sense and what I would have appreciated is if somebody that I that I could feel confident enough in sharing my if I, if I could share and have the courage more specifically, but if I could share how I was truly feeling to somebody who asked me if I would rather be raised as a girl, if I could, you know, if, 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 if I'm not happy as a boy, if I would rather be a girl, and so on. If, if I had that courage to answer that question even more so, if, if even at the times that I remember in my head that I told myself that, you know, I, 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 I wish I was in a different body or I wish I was raised, you know, in a different way or whatnot, and if I had the courage to say that and share that, 
instead of just constantly trying to suppress it and put it away um, would easily be the, the, the one thing to, to take what I knew and just put it on the table. Who knows what would have happened with that, but by not putting it on the table kept me from living as much of a full and enriched life as I absolutely deserve to have. I limited myself by not. I lim I limited myself by being too afraid to share my thoughts because of the fear of not being accepted. So when it comes to about how I was raised, I'll, I'll, I'll twist that as well. That if I could. No, I'm not going to. I was going to say that so if I could change so how other people yeah. raise me, but that's not my responsibility. It is not my responsibility to put and then how other put people act in, that in my own hands. Mm, I'm not going to answer that part. I'm not going to go ahead and say if other people can do different things because th that, 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 that's a can of worms. That's, that's just, it's it's not realistic. It's, it's not even fathomable can't reflect on that because you can't go ahead and all of a sudden assume and imagine and pretend that other people would have behaved differently by your own will. So I'm not going to answer the question like that, but if I can go ahead and reflect on my own life and say that I had the opportunity to say something that I opted not to because of fear and go back in time and tell myself that you, 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 you deserve it to yourself to do those things, you deserve it to yourself to share. won't live the life you are supposed to have if you don't allow yourself to to explain what needs to happen. Um, if I can go back in time and, and do that, um, that's something I 100% like. Not even a question about that. Given the choice of anyone in the world, whom would you want as a dinner guest? I know, right? Oh, okay, I was gonna say, time check. Mm. <laughs> 7 p.m. Angie's talking shit. <coughs> oh my gosh, yeah. Yay. Good job. Somebody who authentically wants me. <laughs> Final answer. That's your back. Somebody who loves me for me, I'd be more than happy to spend that time over dinner with. Doesn't need to be anybody famous, anybody with with a name in the books. Doesn't need to be some sort of historical figure. Doesn't need to be whatever. Um, if I was going to share dinner with anyone, it's with somebody who authentically loves me. So that I'd be more than happy to, you know, to look over any potato yeah, vegetable like one with, um, one with somebody okay. that I can just resonate with and just have a good time, period. Pick one berry, one berry huh? If you could only eat one berry Ooh, Zachary, forever, you know? one that you? Do you hold grudges? Blue I blue remember blue. who <laughs> does what. When um, when I'm done with someone, I just kind of turn it off, right? That even though personality types are often under scrutiny, that I am an INFJ personality type, and by extension of that, a common uh, trait that is recognized with an INFJ personality type, which is not exclusive, by the way, it's called door slamming, where you give an individual who is abrasive for your own life. Chances and chances and chances and forgiveness and opportunities and such and such and you give them warnings and hey, what you're doing ain't right and such and such and whatever. And then there gets to be a point where that person is clearly not copacetic with a healthy life of your own. They just cut them off. Uh, a line that I heard uh, before and it, it truly resonates really well is... When it comes to something like door slamming, and I'll just speak on my hat. I don't hate someone 
I nothing them. They become nothing. They don't. They don't carry weight in my life. They do not matter, right? When it comes to after being violated in whatever way, however way. That it's like I'm not even gonna bother holding a grudge because grudges require an emotional engagement. Grudges require an emotional commitment. Grudges require a matter of still caring about that individual enough to have some sort of feeling for them. And I don't give any of that. Right? That when when I when somebody violates me to a point that I no longer want anything to do with them, or if they don't have a serviceable purpose in my own life they are nothing they're not even hated they are utterly nothing i will look through the person straight to the wall between their skull right through them because they do not exist to me anymore so i don't hold grudges because grudges require caring about someone enough to have a reason to be upset about them they don't exist period. What time is it? Seven? Almost. 627. 627. Then we have the drive. What type of house would you want? Small, simple. This will be my last question too. Small, simple. I don't need like a, you know, one of those homes that's like in Home Alone or whatever, where it's like 13 bedrooms and like a huge kitchen or whatever. No. Uh-uh. Small. Right, one story house, two story house would be super elaborate, but like honestly, a little one story bungalow, decent size, of course. A finished basement would be super neat. Um, mainly just because I like to have you know some rooms dedicated for whatever. I'd like to have a nice kitchen, I'd like to have a finished, ba- uh, a finished basement, you know, with like an, a specific entertainment area. Because like, like I've got, <laughs> I've got a home audio, like a home video, home audio background, so I do like. The idea of having a well, place that's set up for something like that certainly wouldn't be opposed to home automation or whatever too. Um, but like, it doesn't need to be ridiculously large in terms of housing. Just large enough for me and you know, significant other. And um, miniatures. But 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 like, you know, it, it's not. And they don't even care either. Not like. like Showy. It's like functional. It gets everything done. But I don't want to vacuum more than I have to. Right? I don't want to have to walk farther to the bathroom than I have to do. Right? But I would absolutely like to, you know, go downstairs, for example, where the entertainment is, or of course, you know, if it's up in the living room or whatever it would be, and you know, still be able to crank up the stereo and you know, it'll, it'll both look and sound good. So that's um. That's pretty much the house I want. Like I don't, like, you know, I've always, I've always said before, it's like, you know, little house, white picket fence. I'm definitely not a green thumb. That so like, you know, someone else wants to handle like any of the, you know, if there's garden or flowers or whatever, please take care of that, right? But otherwise, just, just honestly, just a little simple home, little simple home for a little simple person. And I think that's, that's the perfect type of home for me, right? Homely, not surely. That's all I can really ask for. And I think I mentioned, right? Like I would just like, I'd like every room in the house to have some sort of. Like it'd be built well, right? Like I'd like a nice kitchen, nice space, nice bathroom, better that. But it doesn't need to be unnecessarily spacious, right? Because, like I said, I don't, I don't. Need more really quite space sure than early where I that's okay next time. Like, this is our first time mm-hmm. doing yeah, together, right? I, like a small mm-hmm. office yeah. or whatever, and then get my work done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's straight up like bedroom. I'd love to do this again. But yeah, that's all in. I can really ask you're for. Right, we should check here. out that clipping spot next this, time. Um, mm-hmm. This flew by, There's and like I really whipped through these questions here this time, and all of these were like, Oh my god, I'm not jumping off those. This was solid. Wow certainly got a good scramble out of that one so 30 minutes flies by thanks everybody for taking an opportunity to tune in and uh, let's see what's going on like i said last week live on location and i'm gonna let you go worry about doing the rest of the uploading a lot later because uh you know i've got some company to keep right now and i'd like to make sure they do that too so thanks for checking this out or checking this out later and 